Okay. Hi, I'm Denise Johnson. I am the creator of Mom's Life. I want to help you. Uh, if you're single, dealing with raising children, not making enough money, but smart enough to start a business, which I'm sure you are, uh, it's not gonna be easy. But if you were able to hold down a nine to five and manage your children and all the other things that go into dealing with life, you have what it takes to start your own business. So each night I'm going to uh, talk about a few things that'll help you get there. Uh, one of the first things you want to do, uh, I wanna give you an overview of the kinds of businesses we'll be talking about. And with Christmas coming up, we want to work on improving your credit and starting the business so you'll have a little extra income coming in before the holidays. Some of the businesses that you can start online, we'll start there, or side hustles or whatever they call them. Um, a really good one is virtual assistant. Virtual assistants make a lot of money because what happens is as a virtual assistant, if you sign up for to be a virtual assistant with Upwork, Upwork uh, is U P W O R K or Fiverr, F I V R. Both of those have contracts online where you can apply for them. And if you're hired, um, you can start several at one time. Most people who make a lot of money as virtual assistants, they usually don't just work for one person or company. They maneuver two or three, and that's why you hear about virtual assistants who can make up to $100,000 a year. So, um, and you can also do it independently. You can put up a website, which we'll talk about, and advertise using Facebook or Google ads and uh, start your own business being a virtual assistant. So it can be very lucrative and you can do it from the comfort of your home because that's, that's the key is freedom. What we're really talking about is being able to come and go on your own terms, not at, you know, punching a clock every day or having to be somewhere at a certain time, dealing with traffic, et cetera. Um, just living life on your own terms. Uh, it's freedom, financial freedom and time freedom. That's what we're talking about. So um, the second thing we want to talk about tonight is um, just giving you an overview of some of the things you can do. Uh, it's drop shipping. People are making lots of money from drop shipping. Some people even say they've made billions of dollars from drop shipping. But we're not going to... Um, be too ambitious with it, but you can make a lot of money with job drop shipping. The only thing I would say, uh, just to give you an overview about drop shipping, uh, if you are not familiar with it, drop shipping is when a company such as the one that I would suggest you use, which is called Zendrop, they're in the United States, and they sell products at a discount. You would put them on a website, which would be Shopify, or um, there's some others, but the one I would recommend would be Shopify. Um, let's just say the product costs $20. You list the product for $40. The extra $20 after the customer purchases the product for $40, because that's what you would list it for, you would pay the drop shipper, Zendrop, the company, $20, and you would make a profit of forty of uh, $20. Again, if the product was $20 from Zendrop, you listed it on your Shopify store for $40. The difference would be the $20 and that would be your profit. And I, I'm sure you're thinking, well, $20, <laughs> how can I replace my job with $20? It's the number of people that would, um, buy your product. First of all, you'd have more than one product. Hopefully you'd have at least four to five products and we'll talk about that. And you'd have hopefully four to five to 10 sales a day, which would get you at least maybe $500 a day. And that, would, that could be without advertising. 
because you don't want to spend a lot of money. A lot of people do. They spend a lot of money on Facebook ads and Google ads, and that's how they're making these millions. So it can be done. Um, the one thing I will say about drop shippers, though, I would recommend, and we'll talk about this, of course, more in detail, um, that you use a drop shipper from the United States. There's, um, the, like the one I said, Zendrop. There are some others, and I will give you the names of those. But I would not recommend that you would use anyone. Um, you know, it's your, it would be your decision, but I would not use anything uh, Alibaba or Alibaba Express or even CJ. Some people do use CJ uh, drop shipping, but I understand they're in China. And the problem with that is it takes 21 to 30 days for the product to get to the United States. And it can cause you to have um, returns, uh, cancellations, and um, you know, people, when they buy something, they don't wanna wait 30 days for it. So it's always good if you were to go into drop shipping to use a United States drop shipping company, such as Zendrop. And I'm not getting any um, affiliate um, or payment for saying that, but I'm just telling you it is one of the better ones. Um, now, the other thing I wanna to talk to you about, and like I said, we're just going over a few things, would be uh, Shopify. How would you sell the drop shipping product? You'd sell it on a website that that would be your platform. Um, Shopify is free. Drop shipping again, uh, I want to mention before I go any further, is one of the few side hustle businesses, online entrepreneurial businesses that you can start for absolutely free, or maybe one dollar. Costs uh, Shopify costs one dollar for the first thirty days. So hopefully you'll make you know enough to pay for. I think it's yeah it's thirty nine dollars a month after that. Drop shipping for the most part is free. You pay a nominal cost of the um, fee, which is maybe a dollar or two, but it's the the entry into drop shipping is very low. So uh, I would highly recommend that if you're thinking, especially with the holidays coming. The one thing you also want to think about when you're drop shipping, if you think about, if you choose to do that, to bring in extra money in the holidays, would to be to choose a name that is um, catchy, memorable, uh, something that has not been used by anyone else. And the way you check to see if your name has not been used by anyone else, go to the trademark government site and they have, um, you put your name in the name that you're thinking about using and see if anybody else has already used it because you don't want to use a name that someone else has already used. So the other thing about a name, try and pick a name that does not have the words credit, real estate, or trucking in the title. Because at some point, like I said, we're gonna talk about credit as well in time. And if you are eligible for business credit, when you talk to the bank about getting loans for your, uh, your business, through your business, uh, they, don't, they don't like uh, to, they're not comfortable with credit, real estate, or trucking in the name. That's just, I don't know, I don't, I can't, I don't know the exact reason, but they don't prefer that. So you would pick a name that's memorable, catchy, not too long, and um, hasn't been used before. And, you know, it could be whatever your choice is as far as, uh, after you make sure that no one else has used it. Because you wouldn't want to put a lot of time and energy and money into a name, and then you find out that it has already been um, used by someone else because then you would have to, in some cases, start all the way over as far as uh, you'd have to shut down your name and um, not use it at all, or else you would always, every time you advertise, it would be a matter of who, would they go to your site or would they go to the other person's site? So it's always best before you start 
um, your business and buy your domain name that you check to see if it has been already um, taken by someone else. Now, regarding your domain name, I'm just going over a few things. Like I said, we'll go into much greater detail in the future. But uh, as far as your domain name, you buy your name that you would use for your business on your Shopify store. You buy that name on um, GoDaddy.com. Some people buy it off of Name.com. But I think that, I could be wrong, but I think that Name.com gets their names from GoDaddy. In other words, GoDaddy is like the major domain name um, broker, is if I'm not mistaken. So I would just recommend when you get ready to um, think of what your name would be, use GoDaddy. No referral, just you know, making that a suggestion for you. Um, so those are the things that we want to talk about a little bit uh, further in, in time. But the first thing I would do, you wanna think about, give yourself a couple of days to think about what it is you would like to do. And from there, you'll know what your name would be. Uh, sometimes the name says exactly what you do, and then sometimes it doesn't. I think names should be more general just in case you change your mind about what you decide to sell. You don't want to say um, dog petting service, uh, dog grooming service, and you're selling. You decide to sell hair. You know you don't want to be locked into a certain name. You don't want it to be Fido's pet food, and then you have to go and start a whole new store. Whereas if it was more general, such as um, let's say. Uh, I have I have a store named Zuki. Now I can sell just about anything on that store. This is a very general name. So that's what I'm saying. You want to have a, a general kind of name in case you decide to change your product line. And, and during the holidays, it's very uh, suggested that you use a general store where you are able to sell all kinds of products, including dog products, because uh, pets are very, it's, it's a very lucrative field. People make a lot of money just selling nothing but pet products. So, um, and we'll talk about that as well. So uh, you wanna talk about your niche, what it is you would sell, what field you would uh, sell in. You can sell cosmetics, you can sell hair. Uh, hair is very lucrative. Um, it's a billion dollar industry. Obviously cosmetics is a billion dollar industry. There are a lot of uh, different niche, niches that you can go into. And when they call them niches, that's what category or field you're going in. But we'll talk about the t-shirts. T-shirts is very, very, um, a, a very good field. We're gonna talk about print on demand, how you would go about making the t-shirts, selling the t-shirts. So I just wanted to give you an overview tonight of what it is we're gonna go over. Um, we'll, one of the other things uh, we want to talk about is how to promote the product, which is probably the most important part. So we'll spend time talking about the different ways you can promote, but just as an overview, some of the free ways you can promote a product would be on Facebook Marketplace. You could promote your products on um, OfferUp. You could use a website, email, you have an email list, you can create an email list. Those are the free ways. Or you could spend money on Facebook ads or Google ads. So there's, um, at some point you're gonna have to spend money on ads if you want to scale. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to scale without spending some money. So we'll talk about that. Uh, let's see, what else did I wanna go over tonight? Oh. It would be good for you to take some time to look on Canva. Canva is a very excellent website that has all kinds, it will remind you of a, a print shop. It has everything you need to design and create. And um, actually you can start a whole business just off of Canva using it to create um, digital products. And we will talk about how 
you can create the business, how to upload it, what websites to upload it to. Um, if you're very creative and know art, you could start making cards. Um, there's all sorts of templates you can make. Um, Canva, just, you know, if you have the time, take about 10 or 15 minutes and just go over, you'll, it'll start giving you some ideas. And the last thing I want to talk to you about is think about what you're good at. Sometimes a business doesn't have to be something that is created from a store or print on demand or t-shirts or what have you. You might have something that you do that's very, that you get a lot of compliments on, that you do well. Do you fry chicken well? Do you uh, have a cake recipe that's everyone likes? Maybe you'll make a cookbook. You can write a cookbook. Or you can sell the products online. People um, ship food all over the world. You just have to know how to, you know, there's a science to it, but it is done. Um, what is your talent? Think about what your talent is. Maybe that's the business you should start. But if not, there's no worry. But there's uh, ways to have an income of your own, on your own, where you're not trading eight hours a day of your time away from your family uh, and working from the comfort of your home. So uh, with that said, I'll be back on tomorrow and we'll walk through uh, some of the other steps. But the first thing I would do, start thinking about your domain name. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? That was it. I don't want to stay on too long. So let's see. Yeah, that's it. Tomorrow we'll talk about affiliate, affiliate marketing and we'll cover a little bit further what we talked about tonight. So each night we'll add a little bit and get a little bit more involved as we go along. And hopefully in the next 90 days before the holidays start, You'll have something that you'll be able to, um, you have created that can um, help you to improve whatever financial goals you may have. So I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Have a good evening.